we had that continuous upside coming into the beginning of the market, but then Biden started saying some words. He started talking about his budget. He started talking about, you know, raising taxes, you know, taxes on unrealized gains, etc. And then we started to see the worries of something we've been talking about a lot here on the channel specifically in the financial sector. Now we've started to see this rollout. And if you've been here for a while, you've heard me talk about this specifically. Everybody has been concerned that the higher interest rates will lead to higher defaults at some point in 2023. And this raises those questions even more because now we have this question of with everything that happened with Silvergate, if you don't know, they basically just went bankrupt, right? The question going into the financial sector is, what are going to be these requirements? We've seen Powell talk about this with the Senate and the House about tailoring specific needs of larger banks to have to have more capital to cover these loans being lent out, right? So that's where we're leading right now. So when we look at what's happening in the financial sector, if you're unfamiliar, we go to really quickly over to XLF, you can see, and this is a four hour time frame. we've seen almost a, a collapse start to happen here. A pretty gnarly drop, probably the biggest drop that we've seen in XLF, the banking sector, uh, even all the way back to June, I was going to say September, but really to June is the last time we saw something this significant. And the question is, is this going to continue to happen and continue to roll over here? Because these are major concerns. This link will be down below if you want to check them out. But this is a, a major, major concern. When we're looking at what's happening with the market, I'm pretty happy they actually mentioned this. Banks and semis are two groups that are historically have been very good leading indicators. But usually when one of them is having an outsized move, it's usually wise to listen to what's happening. So important to see what's happening in this outsized move. It's clearly banks to the downside. But it's also worth mentioning when we look at semiconductors, SOXX. And I know I'm going a little bit off tangent, definitely a different type of video here. But SOXX has been on a tear, ripping, ripping, ripping. Today, I am going to tell you right now, my position that I opened up today, I opened up an AMD in the money put for April. I think it's a little bit near dated right now, but I still love the position. It's a little bit risky, but I love where I'm at with it and I not overextended whatsoever. I'll go into that a little bit more, but when we look at semiconductors. They've been going on a tear Nvidia specifically. I mean, on an absolute tear, if semiconductors roll over with banks, the market is going to get shattered. It's going to be brutal. It's going to be nothing but pain. Now, before we get into that content, I have to ask you to do two things. Consider liking, consider subscribing every single day. I'm making videos for you. So you are prepared. You understand what's happening tomorrow. If I'm in a position, trades I'm looking at, things I look at in the market. I try to be as unbiased as possible. I'll tell you if I'm long, short, whatever it may be. Most of all, I like to go over the winners and the losers. I like to focus on losers because it teaches you risk to reward, understanding how to lose in this market. Because right now, I'm going to tell you right now, the bear market is one of the hardest markets to trade. And this only comes around every like 10, 15, years. So take advantage of it because it's one of the best money making opportunities in the long term. Let's get back to it. Now, when we go over what where we're at, what's happening, and also too, I want to tell you right now, the Discord link is down below. We only have about 10, 15 spots left in it. So make sure you check it out. Um, that's going to be for the $30 share. We don't even have the full access to where everyone can talk and be in the live voice. Just so you know, that th those spots should be coming available maybe next month. But for right now, that's where we're at. Now, I want to go over some trades we were looking at before I even go in depth with anything. And all these trades I usually mention here first, either on Twitter, YouTube, you can get them for free. But it's important to also know, right? I'm not going to tell you my exact entries, ins and outs, everything like that. Twitter, I will tell you when I exit or get into something as well. Now, obviously Tesla, right? It says I made 4,000, but if you look, I got in my average was 14 per contract, got around 20, 19, yesterday. Now today I started getting into my AMD, as I mentioned around 11, two, those got up to like 12, eight on the day, but I'm still holding on my position and they went a little bit down like to 12, but that's where we're at. Now, what I do want to mention is Jay's position. Jay Ream, the guy who runs the discord with me, I literally is an extension of myself. I started getting him on a Tesla, but he started holding his a little bit longer. And these things went crazy. Their starting value 7.7 .7 went to 11. They went all the way up to around 13, one five at the end of the day. I think they went close to 14. So those are going crazy. That's our trades right now. You know, couldn't ask for anything better. Doing really good. Now, when we look at the market, I want to start talking about where we're at and ultimately where we're going. It's been a really good month so far. We were back at it. The swings have been killing it. I'm happy if anyone out there is making money too, but just know this is not financial advice. 
just know at the end of the day, you're responsible for what you do. It's not, that's not to cover my ass. I'm always going to come out and say if I'm right or wrong, I'm going to say, look, I was wrong. Sorry. This is how much money I lost, et cetera. Right. That's why I posted my Nvidia loss last week was to cover that. Now it's important to know though, that when you make those wins, don't come thanking me. Thank yourself. Thank yourself for doing the DD. Thank yourself for finding the contract. Thank yourself for putting in that work because you need to understand you got to put in work if you want to make money in this market. Now, where are we at? So I posted this on Twitter last night, the supply and demand level, and you can actually see what are the four hours so it holds there. So we have our 200 SMA. And then when you get a little bit of a bigger view here, you can see we came up to where that level, it wasn't a supply level, but we came into a key resistance. This was all on Twitter, so you can check it out. And then you rejected back down to that demand down here, which we invalidated and broke down below. Now, when we look at ES, S&P futures, things are pretty, I'm not gonna, they're disgusting. S&P finally made a lower low. You made a new low, okay? This is gross, this is disgusting. This is setting up for bloodshed in the market, in my opinion. We pushed up to supply, came back down, back, back and it just got destroyed. Now you're pushing below the 200 SMA. I'm gonna tell you right now though, where I was wrong, and it's something that I can't really anticipate. I can't tell you if news is gonna come out about the stock market or if they're gonna raise taxes on capital gains or things along those lines. I can't tell you that, right? But what I can tell you is when I'm looking at this is you gotta, like I always say, you gotta be prepared to adjust in the market. So when Biden came out with that, we obviously started to see selling off in the market. And if you don't know, every day on this channel, we are live at 10.30 a.m. Central going over the market. So if you tapped into that live, then you saw what happened and you saw what trades we wanted to take from there and everything we were mentioning. We mentioned Netflix. We mentioned uh, Spy getting rejected and breaking down. We mentioned AMD looking great, right? We mentioned a lot of plays there. And that was just today. So when we look at this, as I'm coming into this, I'm like, man, this is not ideal. Now we need to also understand going into next week, what's happening. We have the CPI and PPI report. CPI is Tuesday, PPI is Wednesday. The Fed already said that is going to be a very large indicator for what they do with rates and their forward looking statements, which I think are gonna be bad, but we'll talk about that later. So understand this, that the move right now is bad, but CPI and PPI are going to be very big indicators. And now more than ever, if we get bad reports from CPI and PPI, there is a high possibility. We could start working our way down towards new lows. And I'm not trying to hype this up or sell anything to you guys. I'm just telling you right now. The sell side that we saw today was eye-opening because we saw what happens when one area of the market starts to really experience pain and has a very bad forward-looking guidance, specifically with the banking sector, right? And now there's worries of capital requirements and where they're at. So when we look here, I wanna give you a quick visual. Now we're below, obviously, the 200 daily moving average on the SPY. Now, I wanna quickly show you a few of these next levels I'm watching, and I don't think you're out of it yet. I still think this is gonna be a little bit of support down here. It just, it's been big, right? I wouldn't call this a demand, so I'm gonna take that off, but I'm gonna tell you, this is going to be a support. 3,900, very big level. If we start to flip below this, it is going to be grotesque. But what I will say, and this is shaping up pretty terrifying, if we look at where we're at and how we're moving, really quick, just getting rid of everything, you could argue, you could argue, this is shaping up to be a head and shoulder, 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 head. I'm just telling you, Bear of bad news, I don't care. It looks terrible, it looks gross. You start breaking below 3,900, I think downside is gonna start kicking in. This is your 200 weekly average on 3,700, it would have to be your next target. But again, 3,900 is gonna be a big level, we need to watch that tonight. NQ, where are we at? Obviously, NQ has carried this market on this run. Now when we look where we're at, obviously my target has to be the 200 daily moving average. We are still above it when we look at this, right? So you have a little bit more room. The question is how do we react from this point? If we break down below it, I mean, it's like, you don't got nothing, until, in my opinion, until the 200 weekly moving average. So that's where we're at now. Again, tonight's gonna be very influential. And tomorrow, what do we have? We have our jobs reports dropping. We need to be watching this, right? So tomorrow morning, if you don't know, we have our unemployment rate that will be released. And we also have non-farm payroll. This is going to be big right here, 8.30 a.m. Eastern private non-farm payrolls, right? These are all big, non-farm payroll, right? 8.30, so 7.30 central for me, an hour before market open is when these drop. Very big, I'll have some posts on Twitter if you wanna check those out. So that's where we're at right now when we look at the broad scale market. Next up, 
What did we talk about yesterday? How terrible our volume was, right? So as we look here, right, this is our volume right here. I recommend using the S&P, just go to SPY on Yahoo Finance. It'll just give you the quickest overall data and the data and the, the volume still going up. I would probably bet we're gonna be close to 108, maybe 109 million on the volume, possibly breaking you know the 30 day high on volume on SPY. When we look at what's happening here, Yesterday's volume, piss poor on the bounce to the upside. What did we talk about? We talked about how weak the volume was. Now, I didn't expect sellers to step in, but again, like I said, I can't predict what the White House is gonna say. It's impossible and I have to react to what they give us. Now, we had that upside move. We bounced 200 points on NASDAQ this morning, right? From yesterday's close to this morning, we bounced almost 200 points. But selling started to occur towards the downside. Again, volume broke out. It increased over your 30-day average, which is around 80 million right now, to 20 to around 23 million above that. To okay, that's where we're at. Breaking out again, signifying the strength is to the downside. This again concerns me, concerns me, concerns me. So when we look at the market, you got to be careful. You got to be watching this very closely. Tonight, what would I be watching? Are we going to get a bounce back to the 200 SMA and how do we react from that point? As of right now, you're weak, you're pathetic. If you break below 3,900, I think you're going, you're, you're going to get crushed. It's going to be brutal. Probably close 3,825, 3,800 next. Now, NASDAQ, a little bit more interesting. We got to be watching. What are we going to do at this area? Are we going to respond? Are we going to react? Are we going to bounce, right? That's the big question. So we have to be watching this area and do we make a lower low here? If we look at what's happening here on the four hour and look and zoom out really quick, we can still see we are in the downtrend so far from our local highs that we have made. Why? Lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, continuously, lower low, lower low, lower low. Are we gonna make a lower low now? If we look at ES and we zoom out, you can definitely see what's happening. Lower highs, lower lows being established again and again and again, right? That's where the market's doing. We understand the structure is towards the downside. That's what we're looking at. You can see, man, coming right into that support right there. Now, what I know you want to look at, and you know, actually before, before we get to that juicy extra content, looking at what's happening here on ES with Bookmap, the link is down below if you want to check these guys out. This is basically just level two data, just visualized for you so you can see the heat map. We started to see that level 40, 20, the rejection there, going back to the chart, right back in that key level, right about here, our previous swing highs, right? <laughs> Pretty ugly, right? You come to that level, get rejected. As we can see here, boom, sellers push us down. All aggression, we see all that volume pushing us down. We saw some buyers try to step in, and then right around lunchtime when Biden gave that news and we started to see the fall off, right? Boom, we started seeing those icebergs kick into the downside. Heavy selling, heavy selling. Our CVD, the momentum, clearly pushing us down, breaking through every single wall that we had in front of us. Again, you're not really seeing any signs of strength here. And look, another bear flag forming on here, there's no buyers trying to hold you up here. Again, this just shows me so much weakness and it's really eye-opening to see how you're aggressively you're moving down here. And again, lots of shorts entering at the end of the day here, but look, you just go right through like butter, that 200 SMA. Again, weakness, weakness, weakness. So going a little bit more, let's look at some stocks that I'm liking. Now, a few names that I'm liking really quick and honestly too, if you haven't watched the 9 EMA video on the channel, this one right here, the one indicator you need to add to your charts, I recommend watching it. Today was a picture perfect example. This is why I make educational content. The 90 MA, the five minute, you did not get above it on one, you had one candle close. You held below it all day long. It was one of the easiest trades ever going short here on Tesla. Absolutely disgusting, just straight down to the trenches. So a few names I'm liking Tesla, obviously you're getting destroyed. It's not really a play anymore. We've been short since around 200. So congratulations if you played that one, awesome. AMD. Probably one of my favorite plays right now. If we look at what's happening with AMD, in comparison, I want to play AMD because it's a weaker name in my opinion, less risk for me than trading something like Nvidia. And I wanted to go in the money so they move pretty solid. I don't have to worry about time on them either. You're making a lower high here on AMD, still showing weakness. The big reason I started entering before the big drop even happened was because of this wick right here. You wicked up, pushed right back down to 85.3. I got in, loved it. Very bearish candle, arguably starting to form a gravestone. Disgusting, disgusting, disgusting. I love it, favorite play right now to the downside. For me, my stops, if we make a new local high, we break above 88.9. 
to around $89. I would stop out of my in the money position. The downside opportunity down to the 200 SMA around 78. But honestly, if you want to get a little bit risky, you still have that daily gap still down here at 75 and another daily gap down at 70. That's why I went in the money so I can be comfortable holding my position if I want to. That's me. That's what I did. That's why I like it. And I try to share what I'm doing with you guys. I went for April 21st and I showed you earlier the 95s. That's where I'm at right now. But again, my risk isn't too large just based on where I got in and based on it being in the money and having time on it as well. Now, a little bit more. What else are we liking here? What are we, what are we looking for some downside? There's been a lot of opportunity here across the board. CrowdStrike was a very interesting play. And I want to talk, and I usually don't mention some of these, these random names out there. But when we look at CrowdStrike, look at how this thing played out. You almost got a, did you get a gap fill right there? You did not. No, you did not. So you had a gap right here. You almost got filled at 136. But look at CrowdStrike. I want you to keep this on your charts. And again, very rare that I mentioned some of these smaller, it's not a small cap, but it's not one of the big large ones like Apple, Amazon, you know, Tesla. So I try not to get too, you know, away from where my my roots are if we start to break below 120 and break this higher low trend i believe you have some nasty downside here on crowdstrike so keep them on your radar be watching them 100 percent, you need to be watching these guys a little bit further so amd crowdstrike going on a little bit more i want to talk about one more play for you guys if we're just looking here again i'm not telling you to go to short now just understand what what we're looking at Nvidia is, is really setting up and I and I'm gonna tell you right now I, I do believe Semiconductors are a little risky. This is not my last play, but I want to let you know you are clearly in an ascending wedge Okay, you are set up for reversal if I've ever seen one. Okay, very much So you are set up to start dropping pretty soon and like I said this article Very important that you're seeing this when you start seeing an outsize moves, it clearly banks to the downside. You got to start paying attention. Banks, semiconductors, some of the biggest movers that can hold the market in place. So again, this might lead the sell-off coming into semiconductors pretty soon. Looking at this wedge, you have a downside, a gap 210, the 200 SMAs at 170, 165. Conservative, 190. I mean, I love the opportunity here, so watch out for it. I'm not in it yet but it's definitely something that's on the radar. The last one, mention this out in uh, on the live stream today, JP Morgan Chase. I mean, dear God, what a wild looking chart. So what I wanna do really quick is I wanna bring over, I'm sorry, not JP Morgan, Wells Fargo. JP Morgan did die today, I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty gross. When we go over to Wells Fargo, shout out to Brad from the live stream. Congratulations, you made the video. If we're looking at what's happening, you are in a clear cut bear flag on the daily time frame. Clear cut. Doesn't get any better than this. Downside opportunity. Obviously, you'd be targeting new 52 week lows, but you can even target back down to 37, about a $4 drop. You're already getting below the 200 SMA. If you hold below this, which you did, I'd be looking for a retest of around 41.7 and trying to ride this down. I'd be going in the money for my positions personally. That's how I would be looking to trade this. That's just me. Do what you want to do. I don't care. That's your 200 uh, weekly moving average. Sorry. And then going on past that, if you start to break down below that, I would be targeting your swing highs you previously had right there around 35. Again, I like, I really like it. I'm going to tell you right now in the money positions look really good. Lower risk. They're not that they're like $5 for in the money, like a 45 uh, contract for even like June. Check them out. Do what you want to do. That's what I'm looking at there. Last things I'm going to mention here are some of the big indicators like we always do. The 10, 30 year yield, the inversion, you got a little bit of a drop today, coming back down to 1.010, right? Still look good. 10 year yield, dangerously close to 4% still. The two year did drop. You were at 5%, you did drop. I expect to see some volatility here. I expect to see these start to moving once again. The DXY, you're still pushing up. We've had that daily bull flag, you broke up, you're getting a little bit of a press back down, retesting highs. I expect these to start bouncing, especially if jobs do bad tomorrow, okay? Well, actually, if jobs do good. So, what you're looking at, in my opinion, for downside in the market, if jobs continue to beat and we start to see unemployment somehow drop or stay where it's at, I think you have to expect the market to, to not like it. So that's what I'd be looking for there. Also, what did we say about VIX yesterday? Once again, VIX is in that key range, $18, $17 range, right? Look at the bounce. 
boom, it doesn't really fail us. It hasn't failed us for like almost three to four years. VIX moving up. I like where we're at. I like a lot of the plays. Favorite play right now is AMD. Tesla, congratulations. Uh, I really, that's all I want to say to you guys. Congratulations if you played it. I'm really happy for everyone. The Twitter link is down below. The Discord link is down below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one.